to implement embedded code. And also DBM system compile even the this part, understand the SQL part. Then DBM system should know where the data table is located and it takes a, there's a much, much overhead compared to the file system approach. But why we love to use, we'd like to use the DBM system? In case we have a very large data, it's a linear increase, it's a little bit. Still, it takes some time. Mm -hmm. Think about when you had uh, 10 million billions of students. If you are lucky, your data is sorted by the last name. At that time, you can access the data hub. Right now, search, right? But still, it takes some time. So, the MMS approach it provides a very nice way, but still takes some time to address such a problem. DBMS, there are two main approaches. DBMS used usually computing system, how the computing system speed up to access the data. Think about your laptop, think about your computer, think about even the this kind of the device, electronic device, how can they speed up? <laughs> Store the data in memory, <laughs> caching approach. Think about the whole human computing architecture. Only main part of the whole human computing architecture is what? Memory. There's a memory in between. So CPU is a very, very fast. And but hard to drive slow. How can you bridge the gap? Using the memory, you can access data very fast. It's a caching approach. Same thing in DBMS. It uses a lot of memory for caching purpose. That is the reason when you install the DBMS system, including Oracle, Informix, DB2, whatever, you need to reserve the area for memory. So it's recommended to dedicate. You have dedicated server for. DBMS only. It's not recommended to use your uh, computer, share the computer resource with the DBMS. No, it's not recommended. Nobody recommends such a system. Then only computer servers for DBMS because these DBMS use almost more than half of the memory as a visual bed. Only for cache. This is called buffer management. Buffer management is one of the important who we will discuss later about the buffer management. And even that's not enough. Oh, by the way, somebody may introduce how much can we improve the speed? Actually, mm, certain percentage of the data in any database access from the database server from memory. And the others are from hard disk drive. Do you think of what is the percentage of accessing data from memory? How many of them? Out of 100 data access, how many of them actually access the data from memory? And how many of them are from hard disk drive? This is called the hidden ratio. Very, very important when you manage the data. Database. What is the percent count? Just guess. Just guess. 50? If you manage your hit ratio as a 50, you will be fired. So, a little bit more. 80? And also fired. <laughs> 100? That's not possible. Okay. 95? You cannot get the full salary. At least 97 through 98. Mostly, most well managed system has 99%, which means 99 out of 100, actually from memory, only 1% go to hard disk drive. How can you do that? Yes, you can do that. There are a bunch of algorithms used for such a 
memory buffer management. Even though you do not manage the system, it's more than 90% auto -memory. Think about your computer. Computer, where uh, do you access it? Where does your CPU access the data? Mostly memory, not hard disk drive. Right? So that's the buffer management to speed up your database system. But that's not enough. The second approach is indexing. That's the indexing. Have you ever heard about index? Terms of index? Yes, everybody knows what is index. Index card, index something. So even your textbook, even though she does not have the database textbook, but anyway, this is a textbook. Any textbook has an index. Why? Have you ever used the index in your textbook? No. She is genius, so she memorizes everything. When do you use the index? To search. Yes. So, have you ever realized the format of your index? Where is it? This one does not. Front is, yes, here, index. Clearly say index, right? So, what's the format of your index? It has a list of keyword, word, not all of them, word, then, followed by the number, that's page number. So you can easily, for example, when I search the sum, Boolean sum, it's a 798, 749. So you can pick up the 749. If you are lucky, you can do one, just one time, first try. Otherwise, nobody wants to check from the beginning. You can use binary search, just a peak and a half, and 700 is higher, and 700 is less, then it's up, and low end. Okay? And it's a complexity. So that is the binary search. Okay? That's the index, exactly the same thing in DBMS. DBMS use the same approach to access data fastly. Okay? That's the index. So what is an index? Actually, what is an index in terms of computer science perspective? What is an index? Engine? Or engine? You're not computer science. In terms of computer science, yes. Address location? Memory? Which course is this? Any other? It's a data structure. It's a different data structure. Okay? Actually, most of the things that you are learning in computer science department, computer science course, are data structure. You are learning data structure. If a computer uses the same language as ours, okay? The English or the whatever the language, the human language, natural language, actually we don't have to learn this kind of complicated thing. Program language is so simple, just order to computer. Then computer can understand. Unfortunately, computer can understand only zero or one. Then overnight, such a zero or one. That organizing means data structure. So you are learning the database management data structure in database course. Modeling, ER modeling. Relational modeling is a data structure. What about networks? Network course, what did you learn? What do you learn in network course? How about you learn about website seven layer and the network layer, application layer, IP layer so is a very good example from your midterm final exam, right? What does it mean, such a layer? It's a data structure. How to organize the data to transfer from here to there even for what? Recovery purpose and fast transmission. It's a different data structure. What about the operating system? How many of you are taking operating system class right now? Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you learn right now? Probably 
in the operating system, there are three main parts, right? One is the CPU, memory, and yeah. So you are memory, hard disk drive, data, something like that. All of them are actually data structure, okay? Operating system has their own data structure. Then, what about the average course? How many of them are taking average course? You are not taking core courses. <laughs> So, algorithm because you are learning algorithm logic, then how are you going to implement? Using program languages, uh, data structure, then different way of the structure. It's, that's your algorithm, okay? Everything, actually everything that you are learning in computer science is data science. Indexing is another data structure. Index data structure. Then, Learn this one so far. Did we learn the, such a data structure? Yes, that is a relational database model. That's a model that we <coughs> learn tables and table has a column, such a data structure. Okay? So we in this class today and the next class we will discuss about such a what is actually the data structure of the table what is the data structure of index how are they organized okay if we understand such a data structure actually we can develop even a system like oracle yes actually developing relational database management system itself is not very complicated as long as you know any program language, you can implement, develop. Why don't you try Google? How many relational database management systems? More than thousands worldwide. Even a couple of years ago, in this class, we developed Ruby, the relational database management system. Very simple. It follows a very simple relational model. The table, column, primary key, something like that. It's the same thing. So we will see in terms of, can you remember this architecture? What is that? It's a three schema architecture. This is an external view. This is a conceptual view. This is a physical view, internal view, external view, internal view. So we will little bit take a look at this part. Okay. How they, how are they organized? How they are organized in this class? So, I'm going to skip this part because you already learned this part in your operating system class, right? You learn. You see the exact same video in your operating system class. Otherwise, if not, you will see soon. Okay. This is the anatomy of what? Hard disk drive. Hard disk drive consists of a bunch of disks. Disk, they are connected by the uh, spindle, and the spindle rotates the disk, and there's the disk arm. Uh, disk arm is moving forward and backward. So who order, actually who control to access the data? So in your program, read data B. Then what happens? CPU interrupt. Okay, then read, bring the B register and read the data B. Then what happens? Interrupt, send the interrupt signal to where? Control. Controller, what is the main role of controller? Controller can handle, manage the any device. Okay, so send an uh, interrupt signal to the disk controller. Disk controller has the program. What's the name of that program? Driver. Okay, driver program. Driver program, disk controller, no how to access the data, then convert B into cylinder number one, sector number something, then finally order to access the data, moving forward and backward, and 
this this will rotate, then finally get the data. And return data to this one, this controller, then this controller sent back to the CPU. During that time, CPU is IO wait. Should wait until get back the data. That's called the IO wait, the duration of the time. But not to waste such a waiting time, CPU use what? Share it. Okay? Based on what? Scheduler. CPU scheduler. Okay? This is not a operating system class for a computer architecture, but you sh definitely you should know such a basic stuff in computer science to understand why we need indexing structure, how they access the data, how to tune up, how to speed up your DBMS system when you manage the data for future. Okay? So this is a disk drive, and it consists of the train number and sector number, then you can finally get the data from hard disk drive. Memory is a little bit different, especially the SSD memory, which is very, very popular right now. Okay? So, this is a typical data structure for files using database, okay? That has two keep anyway, before we go to the index or table, for table data, we want to store the such a data in table in the file system. But can we use any file system? Yes, we can use. Uh, in that case, if we use just a plain text file in your program, so for example, so this is a student table file, so lead, student ID 111, CS, comma, whatever. You should know what this one is. And you should know where, what is the length, who are separate. So, very, very complicated. We try to have some term format, certain data structure to keep such a data in database. First, data structure is the record. So record indicate what in terms of the relational model? Tuple or load, okay? So it has a fixed or variable length. Fixed length means, for example, name has a 30 byte fixed. Okay? Social security number, 9 byte. It's a fixed length. But problem is L, E, E, it's a waste of space. So you can use fixed the variable length, but at that time we should have a certain delimiter. Separator, okay? Sometimes we can use a comma, sometimes we can use the non-popular used character, special character for that. Okay, it's quite similar idea as what? Variable character and character, was, which was a homework for you last time. Do you remember? The variable character, variable character two, and character. Okay, so each one has represent a record. Each record can have either fixed length or variable length. Both of them are implemented in real relational database management system. For our framework, they use a variable character or character, fixed length. Okay, and also each record has a field that has a value. What is that? It's a column attribute in database. So another, so we have the record. We can have the file that has a record. So each line can represent record one, record two, record three, and so on. So we, that's sometimes enough to create a student table. To access the data in student table, you need to open the entire file and find the appropriate row, okay, or location. What if we have the one terabyte size student file? You need to open one terabyte size file, okay? What does that mean? Open the file in operating system. You need memory, okay? What temporary space? Copy the file, 
if you are using the VI or the, the Windows editor, that create the 1045 for saving purpose to keep secure your original file until save the data. Okay? So it's a way in case of you have the one terabyte size, it's a waste of your resource source. So to address that problem, we are going to use block. Block one, block two. What's the blocking? In operating system class. Block is storage, storage area. It's a data structure. Data structure for what? To store records. Yeah, for us? To store records. To store the record. Then, what is the main problem? Without blocking, we can store the data in the file. Then, I have to separate by the block. So, to understand such a concept, why don't we go back to operating system class? Operating system class, you learn about block. Each operating system has their operating system block, OS block size. What is the size, typical size of operating system block? You will be great in operating system class. <laughs> what is the size? Five, five, twelve, five. Almost all operating system is 512 bytes. Then, why 512 bytes? How can it be used? It's a I.O. unit. It's the smallest input and output unit. When you read the data, it will read 512 bytes, block by block. Okay? That is the operating system block. Then why we use the operating system block? 512 bytes. Two speed up input and output. Okay, even though we need just one byte of the data, entire 512 byte where the data is located, stored, will be returned. It will go to the memory, it will go to the register, the education register, okay, to speed up. Otherwise, for example, when I access one byte data 512 times, sorry, it will take a long time. He said, just to return entire block. Then, that's the same idea of the, this one, caching. If the, this is one block, this data is used, there might be higher chance to be reused the next, next, next one. Mostly. Okay? So that's the blocking. So same idea in database. We are going to use blocking idea. One block, so one file, one table has a number of blocks. Are they need to continuous? Is a continuous block? Continuous block is better performance, but doesn't have to be. Just like the operating system. Operating system, you'd better find the continuous block, not always. It can be and anywhere. As long as the file header know where the they, they are located. Or sometimes you can use link. It's an operating system, not database. Okay? So similarly, we employ such a blocking idea to speed up better performance in database. So each table has a number of blocks. They don't have to be continuous. Each block has how number of record. So in this case, for example, one block is 150 byte, okay? And block size is 512 byte. How many blocks can we keep in one block? How many records in one block? Three point something, right? So it's a flooring, ceiling, flooring. We, we cannot have 3.5 block, so we have only three blocks. So blocking factor means number of records 
torque. So blocking factor is very important part in the, the important information in curing process. Later, we will see how we can use. So sometimes, so 450 byte use the, the other 62 byte are waste, right? Remainder. If you want to use a six, 62 byte. Yes, you can do that, but one record will be separated. So it's a link. Okay, it's called span. So you can choose either span record or unspanned record. Span record is a better capacity. You do not waste any space, but it requires two times of I. Okay? So sometimes if you the your system is good when you install your system first time, so create the day table and insert the data, it's working very well. One year later, it's a slow, getting slow. Because of this sometimes. Data is in and out, insert, delete, update, insert, update, delete. There are a bunch of the span record, which means it requires double times of I input and out. Okay? So this is a blocking. Span the record means you can they use the two blocks. What about the typical size of the database? Block. Operating system use 512. What about the database? Database use any size of the block, but you'd better use multiplication of multiply of operating system. Otherwise, anyway, eventually, DBMS use operating system to access the data. So you can have 1K, 2K, 4K, sometimes 64 megabyte block size. Idea is the same. It's a basic smallest unit of I.O. in database. In other words, when you access data in 64 megabyte, you need just one record. But entire 64 megabyte will be transferred to the memory. So really happen? Yes. In the data system had it. Have you ever heard about the header system? Header is the distributed system for huge amount of the data. At the time, it requires the bigger size of the data flow. What about the 512 block? Online transaction processing system, like the banking system, it requires very fast response time. What is the response time in operating system? It's a midterm exam question, right? What is the response time? Uh, process, uh, response of the process, automation of another process. Duration of between uh, starting, executing, and first response. That is the response time. Like the Google search engine. So, Google search engine or any search engines are nice, but nobody wants to wait more than five seconds, six seconds to be returned. But when you type the, your search keyword, Google does not retrieve the entire data at one time, first time. Instead, quickly responds the first page. Then the others are running. So when, whenever you click the next, next, it will go forward. Okay? So that is the response time. So, Small. If you are using bigger size of data block, when you click between the data, 64 meg you need to wait until 64 megabyte data are transferred. It takes a long time. So response time, big response time. So usually small size of data block is used for online transaction uh, processing system like the banking system or stock market system or search engine. Or on the other hand. The bigger size of data block is used for batch system, such as data warehouse. You heard about the data warehouse. What is a data warehouse? 
What is a warehouse? It's a story, big story. Long, long time ago, probably 1980, 1990, the lower of 1990, so thanks to the client server environment, the two tier system or to the three tier system, at the time, huge amount of data are created. So we can build very nice relational database management system that works very well, certain amount of the data. When you have data, they have a bunch of low data, transaction data every day. Their size is bigger than two terabyte, three terabyte, which doesn't fit to the traditional relational database. So sometimes we don't need all the data. Most of that data are history. Okay? So why don't you put this kind of data in? Warehouse, like a Costco, comparing Costco and the CVS. You know the, the difference, right? We go to Costco, not much choice, but it's a cheaper if you consider the unit price. But you need to purchase bigger size of data block, this is 4 megabyte, even though you need one. But in CVS, can buy one by one. Unit price, this is cheaper, but it depends. So same idea. Like this. this is data warehouse. So you can put all the data. This data warehouse can be used for, for what? All that. Something begins intelligent system. But not much, but it can be used for such a system. Nowadays, data is bigger and bigger, much bigger than this one. It's a petabyte, see? Petabyte, exabyte size. This is usually terabyte. So even this data warehousing, data warehousing system still uses relational database. But this big data system, relational database system cannot offer, cannot take care of such a huge amount of the data. So at the time, we need a different approach that is had to base big data system that has a 64 megabyte the block size. When you see such a block size, you can guess what kind of this system is. Okay? So that is a blocking. So I spent a little bit more time for blocking because it's a very important concept. Okay? Then finally, so we can define the file. File is can be used for table. This is like exactly the same as that you learn file structure in your operating system also. Okay? But then you go back to your, if you already took the operating system. I believe from time to time I will, has been asked how can I be a database organization? How can I be a database developer? At the time, taking core courses first. Other important courses, operating system, network, computing architecture, algorithm. These are the basic of basic. I know, after you graduate, you'd like to get a job. At the time, you want to show your uh, ability, so you'd better take the very decent program language at first. Then you can be programmer. You cannot be a manager or the software engineer. Okay, that's the different thing. I believe at least the master level, master. Degree. What does that mean, master? Master of science. If you take the martial arts lesson or taekwondo or karate, the who is the master? You're the teacher. It's called the master. Master means you already master everything in your area, then you can teach other. Okay? That doesn't mean that just the higher programming skill. No, that's different. Think about your math teacher in your high school. If she or he took a SAT math, I don't think they can be perfect. But they can teach. Teaching is different from the what they know. Okay? 
So you should be able to teach at the time. Why are you? Oh, yes. So your basic knowledge on computer science is very, very important. So at least you'd better have the textbook on your bookshelves, such as operating system, computing architecture, compilers. A compiler is much, much important than your programming skill. If you understand the compiler, I think it doesn't matter what kind of language you use. How you can, how compiler generate the assembly code. Okay? That's the key point. When you take a look at your programming code, if you understand such a compiler low level processing, you can realize whether this programming is good or bad. Okay? Even though output is the same. Whether how many memory are used, how many times loop are used. Okay? Anyway, this is already seen in your operating system class. Who will use the same thing in fine? So record block fine. Okay? So this is a data structure using DBMS. Based on this idea, you can implement, actually develop the DBMS system. What about the file? What if I taught the operating system class? So probably I will make uh, I will offer the project to develop such a file system. So file can be object, file can be struct, file can be anything or from so, so whatever the language you use, then it has a method such as open the file, find the find the next read. This kind of concept is already used in sequential database, like the ISAM file in ID. Okay? Here's the one thing, reorganize. What is a reorganize method in file structure? Reorganizing? Reorganizing what? Uh, the file in the image, Anyone else? What is a reorganized method? The others are straightforward. In tutorial, you can understand what is a reorganized. So, can you remember, can you remember that, that if you have a lot of spent data, it will take a longer time to access the data. You'd better have the continuous block. Okay, continuous data. So. To speed up, think about what is the name of function in Windows? I don't know whether Windows 7 and 8. So you can be different one. You can do the different one. What does it mean? Your file is not the big chunk of the file. Instead, it's a block. It's scattered everywhere in your file system. Same idea. Why don't we reorganize the block continuously? So how can you do that? Back up. Delete, drop the table, and create table, create the file, then insert. Okay. That's simple, but because of that, I quit my job. <laughs> Think about the one terabyte size table. Okay? Back up, how long it takes? Several hours. And we create the insert the data, several hours. Also, I cannot do such a job daytime. It should be done midnight, right? After business is closed. I worked for the bank. The bank usually closed the 20, now, nowadays it's 24 hours a day because of online banking and the internet banking. But it was there is the, the closing time at the time. So I have time slot only four hours, midnight to 4 a.m. So during that time, I should finish the difference. So if something happened, so I am fired. Even before that, my wife would try to kill me. Because every night I should leave and uh, work for at my office. Then when I was a junior database administrator, actually the, according to the policy, I can be all next day. But which is not easy. I should work at the time. Nobody recognized whether I the spend the entire night or not. Only the manager, his full sign for my the overnight work. Even over time pay, it's not easy to get such a money. So that's the reason I quit my job and 
try to. But actually, the, during my PhD life, it was the same life cycle. Sometimes we call the middle of the day as Monday through Friday, not Saturday, Sunday, Friday, 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 then Monday again, no weekend. Okay, that is the uh, file. So don't be confused. This file structure is the same as the file in the text file. Actually, some of operating system use the, this file structure for their file system. If each file has the, this kind of functionality method, but not many. Okay? But this is a general the file stru file structure used for database. There are two types of file for this ordered file and unordered file. As you can imagine, if data is ordered by certain what? Primary key? Not always. It doesn't have to be key attribute. Any color can be ordered. If not ordered, it's not ordered file. At the time, what is the main difference? Ordered file, non ordered file? Searching. How can you search non ordered file? Full table step. You need to scan linear search. What about ordered file? By using color. But ordered color, you can use the binary search. It's not the indexing yet, okay? Forget about index. It's not just order, not order. So order the file is called a heap or a part. Heap because it's increase, increase. Whenever you have the new record, you can just add, add, add. What about the order the file? You need to find appropriate location. It takes a lot more time, right? There's a pros and cons between ordered and unordered. So this is the typical example of the file based on our discussion. How many blocks in this case? This is the customer table, customer file. How many blocks? N number of blocks, okay? Each has, each block has a number of record we do not know the blocking factor. But if we ignore this one, one, two, three, one, two, three. And it's an ordered file or non ordered file? It's an ordered file by what? Name. Can we say name is the primary key? We don't know yet. So it can be any colors. So this is a summary of the, our discussion. What is the complexity, computational complexity of the binary search? No, B. B is the number of what in this case? Number of block or record? Block. Record. 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 If record is, should be I. Right? B means block. Why is block? As I said, what is a block? Block is a basic unit. Basic unit of input and output. Even though you read one record, it requires entire block. Same thing. Average blocks. That number of block will be used for query processing. Query process will use such a number of blocks later. So go B based on two. Because it's binary search. What about the complexity of linear search? And which means B, number of blocks. B? Then Y is the B over 2. If you are lucky, you can access first time. If you are not lucky, entire block. Average, mm -hmm. half. So that's the reason B over 2. We can use a hashed file. This is one approach. Next approach is we can use the hashed file for data structure, table structure. 
Question, what is a hash function? What is a hash? Everybody know hashtags. <laughs> Why? It's called a hashtag. Because it's identify something. Identify something? Why is it not called the index tag? Why is it not called something tag? It's a hashtag. It's not organized. Sequentially organized. Sequentially organized. Any anyone else? What is a hash function? Everybody knows hash is there. Everybody heard about hash function before, right? Never heard about the hash? Function uh, value based on uh, an index based on a value. Mm -hmm. So if it's named, then it will put in the name of the exact yes. index. So hash function is a function. What is a function, by the way? <laughs> function. What is a function? When I learn the function at elementary school, my math teacher it's a show that this one. It's kind of black box. Something put the number, output is 4. 4, 8, 10, 20. What is this box? It's a twice. It's a times 2. So it's called a function. So x is the input, output is 2x. Or y equal fx graphic format. Something like that. Do you remember that? This is a function. There is an input and output. So that's the reason it's... I cannot remember the Chinese character. It's something like this. Those who are using... Han. Yes, Han. Something like that. Yeah. It's not exactly the same, no. but yeah. It's quite similar. But anyway, that present a box. Okay? But there are something inside. But this is a box. Function is the same. Okay? So, hash function, there's an input and output. What is an input? Do you remember what the answer? You mostly complicated value. For example, full name, address. In Facebook, it's a message. Okay? Complicated input and what is the output? Simplified value, which is a whole hash key. Okay? For example, what is the most well known hash function? <coughs> hash function. Anyone? Most popular hash function. Modular. So, for example, something modular by what does it mean? This will be either one of these. No matter what number you have, either one, two, three, four, five. Right? This is called hash key, and each each one is called hash bucket. Okay? So for example, 10 going to be 10. And 11 going to be here. And 1 going to be here. And 2 <coughs> going to be here. What? 1 million, 2 going to be here. This is a hash function. Where, ha where? What is the application of such a hash function? If you have a nice input, you can actually organize this data by the such a value set. But this is a complicated <coughs> number. For example, think about the full length or address. They are too long. So when you sort such a data, it requires reserve huge memory. Also slow. You need to convert the data string, mostly string, character data as an input. But output should be the simple. This is called hash function. So, what of the hashtag? Hashtag for each tag will match to the key, hash key number just. So when I 
at you can't find a fault. It will match to the zero hash key. Then all message ID will be here in Facebook system. So if you want to retrieve the message that was tagged by the, this hash key, very easy. Find input is this one and using hash function convert to zero, then you have a list of messages so fast without using any indexing technique. You can implement this simply. That's the hashtag. I never use the hashtag, but when I saw the first time hashtag concept, so what you know is different from when you get actually. Everybody knows such a hash, the approach, but Facebook. Who was the first time to use a hashtag? Twitter. Twitter, Twitter. They can use such idea. Okay? It's a very well-known approach in image three. So we can use hash file without using the indexing structure. Any additional indexing structure, we can speed up to search the data. 